A little bit uh, cream crackered, as I say. Cream crackered, what does that mean? That means rhymes tired. With, rhymes with knackered. Are <laughs> <laughs> serious? Well, it was right then. <laughs> Hey, it's really, really good to be back um, with community groups. Glad you could be, you know, doing this. Excited that God's got us into this new season. You may be around a few new people, people that you don't necessarily know, but I just want to encourage you to get involved, to be a part of things, and uh, let's get into what God's saying for us. Okay, so Mark, um, just want to pick your brains a little bit. You know, we, we're looking at Christ's testimony, uh, being in the Church of Corinth, right. and playing yeah. out with gifts, how that works out. Yeah. Um, you talk a lot about experiences that you experience almost on a kind of regular basis where God meets you in a golf course or this or that. And right. Is that the way you pray? Is it, you know, how, how does that happen? How, do, how, how does that work for you? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, definitely the way that I pray into my life kind of on a daily. You know, Paul talks about being in prayer constantly. It's not like necessarily this moment where you sit down and like, you know, prayers, this kind of constant flow of you know there's moments where i'll turn around a corner at a golf course and i'll see a a vista or something and i'll be like thank you lord you know constantly you know it's like i love the idea of the greenery and being well manicured and how it yeah. touches the blue of the sky and there's water you know there's like and bc is obviously you know i grew up in ontario so everything was just kind of flat Over there too. But yeah so uh so yeah, so in that sense, and then of course with people, um, connecting with, you know, it's one of the opportunities to connect with people all the time when you're golfing with them and you learn about people and you know, they're new and you tell them what you do and you know. So, um, so that's, but I think, I think it's about trying to be present in the moment and constantly like, God, what are you, how do I feel you right now? What are you saying to me right now? Um, and as you experience these things in life, just constantly trying to be conscious of like, what, where are the opportunities that God has for me? Whether I'm doing something as normal as golfing or sitting in a coffee shop or working a job or whatever, trying to be intentional about yeah. leveraging those experiences, you know, for the advancement of the gospel or even just worship, yeah. you know, and just going, man, God is so big. He's so good. This is crazy. So, you know, um, just trying to be conscious and deliberate about it. So do you think we can be naturally supernatural? Being intentional, looking at your day, and then thinking about, okay, I'm here in the office, or yeah. I'm, I'm meeting so-and-so, right. or I'm having a conversation in a restaurant at lunchtime, I'm, I'm meeting a few guys in business. Yeah. How can I pray into that? Right. How can yeah. God use me? Maybe like step one, yes. you know, the A, B, C, D, E. Right. It might not be like bang, or it may right. be. Yep. You know, God could yep. lead you that way. Yep. So it's just like making that more part of our lives. Well, I think that's, that's how the supernatural works. Even if you look at like God, parting the Red Sea or, you know, raising Jesus from the dead or feeding, the, it's all, it's all natural processes yeah. being, you know, sped up or, you know, pulled apart or multiplied or reversed. And so God takes the normal, natural, yeah. normal people of the world and does supernatural things through them, through his power and, you know, our recognition of, okay, this is what he's going to do. So there's an expectancy that I think sometimes... A lot of us don't live with. We don't expect God to do miraculous things among us, or 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 have the person actually come to know Christ across the lunch table, or um, whatever it is. And I think we should expect more of that. Okay, good. So okay, let's let's collect that. Um, let's think about our days and how God guides us through those days. Let's pray for each other as a group, and just thinking about how we can be naturally supernatural. You know, work, school, places like that. Yeah, and I think one of the ways you could do that is even tell, tell a story or two. Yeah. Um, about something recently where you have felt in those natural moments and rhythms of life, something supernatural actually took place. Okay, so um, we just want to touch on the idea about gifts, about spiritual gifts, and uh, you know, it talks about the church wouldn't be lacking in gifts. So Mark, what I'd like to ask you, um, gifts can be over sentimentalized Right. Okay, how was the kind of gifting in you confirmed in your own life? Was it just something you had or people spoke into you? Or how can, how can we use our gifting, you know? Yeah, I think what's important that people um, first identify their gifting and then walk in it. And so the way you identify it is through scripture, through leaders, through the church. Um, and when I say the church, I mean the people, you know, fellow believers, Christians around you, confirming 
exhorting, directing you to know, okay, here's what I'm actually wired in, here's what my passions are, here's how I'm gifted, um, to use that in the context of the church. So for me, um, I was kind of a new Christian. I thought I was going in one direction in my life and I had a group of guys around me around a campfire in the summer actually telling me I should move in this direction because they thought I was gifted in these three or four ways. Yep. Around leadership and knowledge and teaching and apostolic leadership and that kind of stuff. And so I should think about doing pastoring and, and leadership. And I was like, that was not what I was going to do with oh, my life. I was going to go, I was going to go to film school. I was going to do different things. Yeah. So that kind of got my attention. I was actually already in college. Um, and then I went away a week later to a friend's house and her father prayed. We had some late night, we're all hanging out and I ended up in some room with him chatting about life and he just started to pray for me and he started giving me the same stuff. Yeah. These people don't know each other. Wow. So within a two or three week span, it became pretty clear how God was kind of saying ministry, life, leadership, da, da, da. And so I was like, oh man. So. I was working at Michael's Arts and Crafts store. I was, uh, and I just, I remember the day I was sitting there looking at the wall and I just started to cry. And I was like, I'm, I'm going in the wrong direction. Yeah. I need to shift direction. But the problem was my family's not Christian. So I didn't, I couldn't go, I, wanted, I need to go to Bible college. Cause they're gonna be like, no, you're not. Like yeah. go two years college, get your thing, degree, whatever. So I went and got all the, all the, the, all the booklets and brochures and whatever. And I laid out this whole presentation, you know, to my parents. And I was like, look, this is a thing. This is how ministry words the Bible. And they're like, what? I didn't even know there was such a, yeah. I didn't actually even know there was something. And so I explained what it was and they're like, Hey, and I just argued enough that they went, okay. Um, one year, you got one year at Bible college, do your whatever. Yeah. And then once that year is over, if it doesn't go well, then you're going back to, you know, college and doing your thing. And so, yeah. um, my dad had passed away. So I'd stored away money that they'd given me every month. The government gave me every month okay. um, through high school. So I was paying for my own college anyway. So I said, just let me spend it on this. So anyway, so then uh, the rest is history. I jumped into it and my parents saw that I was like, boom. Yeah. And then it just kind of started to morph from there. So anyway, it all, point being, I tell that story to simply say, listen to the people around you. Don't just listen to yourself in a vacuum, you know, cause you might've eaten some bad pizza and you think you got some gift that you don't have. So listen to the people around you go, no, 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 you have that, you know, it's, anyway. So, so what about your, like, what, how did you figure out what your wiring was? I think a little bit about what you said, I, I wanted to communicate. I felt yeah. that there's, there's something in that and people around me uh, just gave me the opportunity. When I first became a Christian, clubbing, stupid, idiot, you know, and then got, got, got me, brought me into a group of people. Yeah. And uh, You were clubbing? Oh. I can't picture you clubbing. <laughs> I can't picture you clubbing, man. It's <laughs> serious. Well, it was rave then. <laughs> and then, uh, so it's like... White man overbite? <laughs> yeah. So, so um, <laughs> we went to any of these groups, and the youth leaders were really, really good. And they yeah. gave people opportunity. Right. So even if you're actually stupid, right. it's like, why don't you speak for five minutes? Right. And if it's horrible, we'll tell you. Of course. Horrible. Yes. Okay, yeah, so right. they did that. Reginald, right. they just gave us the opportunity. So that was an encouragement. Yeah. And also hanging out with a bunch of young guys and just serving. Yeah. And actually stepping out in different directions and saying, right, okay, I've served in this area. Yeah. Is that me? Right. I've served in that area. Right. Is trying that me? different things. Uh, yeah, just trying yeah. different things yeah. and going around that. And bit by bit, that began to form. Yeah. And then I just felt an inkling, and I've met my wife by then. And uh, should we go to Bible college? Should we mm -hmm. just try something? Mm -hmm. And the church came behind us and said, yeah. yeah. So they just sent us off, trundled cool. off. Right. And that, that was a kind of start thing. So right. it, it was in that trying out, working right. at different things. So, yeah. so both of us obviously are two examples of formal ministry. 99.999% of you won't ever do that, and nor should you. But you're wired with spiritual gifts. Every Christian has at least one, if not multiple. <laughs> um, those lists are in Romans 12, Ephesians 4, 1 Peter, um, and so in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, which we're going to get to in a few months, um, years. Um, so you got to think about that for yourself in the workplace, as a soccer mom, as a nurse, as a lawyer, as a whatever you do, you're wired. You're not going to be called to go to Bible college and go to ministry. You got to figure out what your wiring is, what your gifting is, and serve the church. Uh, not the formal church, the body of Christ in the world as salt and light and to really figure out what is your specialty and then just kill that. 
because you can't be all things to all people. Um, so f identifying that and then walking in it are the things that we want you to do. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's our priority, right? Yeah. yeah. So let, let's gather that. Let's pray about that. Let's just talk about our gifting and some of those passages that Mark has touched on. Why don't we just dig into that as well? So just encourage you to do that. Thank you. So, okay, so Paul mentions at the end of this passage the whole idea about we're waiting for Christ to be revealed. Yeah. Um, and as you, you, you walked us through Revelation 5 and stuff. So what does that, what does that mean? You know, what is that? Well, I think the point, I was trying to, you know, the, the, he, he gives this, you know, in technical terms, what's called like this eschatological thing, this end time moment where he's like, by the way, all of this, I mean, he's only in verse 6, 7, and he's yeah. already going... He's already kind of summarized the whole story, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's like, oh, and by the way, Jesus will be revealed one day. And the point of that revealing is to give them encouragement in the midst of their life, persecution, immorality. I mean, they weren't a hugely persecuted church, but their immorality, their kind of Christians gone wild life. <clears throat> you know, Jesus is going to be revealed one day. Boom, he's going to appear. So yeah. you better have your stuff in order. Yeah. Um, and so he's kind of putting that in front of them. But yeah. it also has this you know, effect on us where when we hit the suffering in life, the challenges, the, the health stuff, the disasters around us, whatever goes down, we have this thing that a secular worldview doesn't have, which is why secularism actually needs to tap into religion when tragedy occurs and why, you know, on our social media, it's like yeah. praying for you or thinking about you, all of a sudden everyone's a new age, you know, philosopher or something. Yeah. Because they have to borrow because their worldview actually doesn't even help them. Um, because the only thing in regard to secularism that matters is in the now, this world, there is no afterlife. So this is all there is. So yeah. if this is all there is, you need to make the most of it now. Okay. So. Paul just right away puts this end scope in. By the way, there's going to be a day when when Jesus gets revealed as, and, and so that word revealing is kind of this 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 apocalypsis. Like he's going, the veil will be pulled back, and what's true will become even more true, yeah. and everyone will know it. Yeah. And um, and so now live live that out in light of that confidence when you hit persecution, when you hit doubt, when you hit fear, when you hit suffering, yeah. live your life in light of that confidence. He's in, he's actually the king. You're on the winning team. Yeah. That's what was my point. So revelation five comes in where he's got the scroll, the plan of history. So even when you hit that tragedy, just know that the lamb who was slain holds the scroll. And one day everyone's going to know he was in control. Even the people who don't think he is now. So when you go to your call, it's like, it's like knowing, it's like knowing stuff to be true gives you confidence. You know, if you know a math equation is 100% true and you walk into the classroom yeah. and everyone's like, I don't know what's it, you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I got you characters, I know yeah. what's what. It's like live your life in the confidence that one day what you know to be true, which is Jesus is Lord, will be revealed to everybody. So walk in it, Yeah. you know? Um, anyway, so that was the, and even in the midst of suffering, just walk in the confidence that that reality gives you. Okay, yeah. so let's just think about that, how we can, walk in that confidence and how our, our, our kind of role and, the, and yeah. the understanding that, you know, we have an eternal future, an eternal destiny, yeah. and that should influence the way we live, the way we talk, and the way we do life together. So just discuss that as a group. So we just want to say that it's, it's amazing that we can be together. And I just want to encourage you at this kind of early part of the group, we're just getting to know each other that maybe we should be praying about each other's gifting. And if you're not sure about your, what your gifting is, maybe it's, you know, it's good to actually be around others and they could point that out and actually pray into that. So I'd just like you, you to encourage you to do that. And the other thing is that Mark talked about confidence, that we can have a real confidence in God. So if you don't feel confident, maybe that's something that we can pray about as well, as far as like sharing your gifting and sharing your faith. So I just want to encourage you in that and just keep on going. Thank you.